This will be the fifth episode of Terry Tribune, and we're going live today. Um, we have several, several different uh, guests for this. My name is John. I'll be your host today. We got Kellen. How you doing, Kellen? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Not too bad. And then we got Paul. How you doing, Paul? Good, good. Just getting the videos and stuff ready. All right. And then we got Ben. Hey, guys. How's it going? And then, finally, but not least, we got Richard. Yo, guys. What's going on? All right. So, today we're going to go ahead and go over the preview of and our thoughts on the Beta Weekend event of Guild Wars 2. So, um, let's go ahead and kick this off. So, all in all, guys, what were your first impressions on um, the stability and whatnot of Guild Wars 2, Kellen? Um, as far as stability goes, I thought it was all right. I mean, they did... I was surprised that the beta was even up as long as it was on like the first day and how little server crashes they actually did have. I've been a part of Xbox betas that didn't go this well. You know, ones that were the first entire day was almost completely unplayable. So as far as stability, I think they the stress test obviously helped them out in that regard. Um, the game itself, as far as it ran, um, there was a lot of issues. They didn't come anywhere close to meeting the minimum system requirements, uh, you know, I had a lot of friends who had pretty big issues running the game itself, and I consider myself to have kind of a mid to high end computer, and it was struggling with frames per second around people. So I mean, there's a lot of polishing to do, obviously. But overall, as far as the game is playable if you have a good enough computer, and the overall, servers run most of the time, the I consider that to be a decent beta. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty surprised too. I mean, when I was playing it uh, the first day, it was a little bit laggy, and but the servers did go down for a half an hour, I believe, on the first day, and after that, it seemed like it ran a lot smoother. And um, going in the overflow, uh, I guess you would say world, in the worlds, was um, it still had quite a bit of lag, but then again, I mean, it was a stress test all in all. Um, do any of you guys have other opinions on the first day when you guys logged in, at least? Uh, I didn't get on until, like, much later at night, and I guess, like, I didn't have much problems, really, once I was on. I, I heard from you guys, personally, like, about all, all the lag and all the issues, but I never really had a chance to experience it. Yeah, it was pretty standard first day on an MMO kind of thing. It was packed, it was laggy, there was lots of people asking questions, and so the chat was all lagged, too. I mean, really, it's standard stuff you'd pretty much see from any other MMO actual launch, as far as I'm concerned. The only thing is that uh, I noticed frame rate got especially bad when there's a lot of players around, and that first, you know, hour, everyone's in those starting zones. So it was... 15 frames a second for the first couple hours of the game because there's so many people around and I was like what the heck's wrong and you know, then I figured out on reddit people were saying oh you know there's people are saying okay well their graphics cards are barely getting used and most of us being rendered with the CPU and all that nonsense so I understood it at that point I'm like okay it's just going to be laggy around people and I accepted that and moved on I think a lot of people probably misinterpreted that lag as server lag for some weird reason too like the servers never I never noticed a lot of input lag, um, unless I was on an overflow server. The overflow server seemed to have some kind of some performance issues, but on the whenever I was actually on the servers itself, I never noticed any input lag or anything. It was just that frame rate lag. What did you guys think of the the character creation? Because I played the original Guild Wars, and uh, it kind of had that reminiscent of the original Guild Wars, being able having like the preset faces and whatnot, and then being able to a little bit, um, I guess you could say, like, change or whatnot with the sliders and everything, you know, size of noses and whatnot. Did you guys uh, like the character creation in comparison of, like, other games? Like, um, I know that, well, what was that one game? That came oh, it's compared to Terra. Yeah, Terra. Yeah, Terra actually launches tomorrow, but uh, I personally, like, I, I prefer them just to stick with normal faces. Like, changing... Their character creation to me didn't feel that great. I mean, for me playing Terra, their like changing the face is a lot more like it's visible, much more visible changes. Or in Guild Wars, like I try to adjust the nose, and every nose just looks like a, a big button nose. 
instead of like being able to make it skinny yeah. or short and stuff. Do you think it added enough variety? Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. Uh, personally, uh, or I'm not Paul, but <laughs> okay. um, <Same> personally, <laughs> I think it's a huge step up from um, at least I, I'm coming from playing um, Star Wars: The Old Republic and the original Guild Wars, and I, I'm pretty impressed with the uh, character creation just because it's just so much more. In the original Guild Wars, you had Necromancer and you had a necro guy, you had no choice but to make him look like a freaking mo child molester, you know? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> That's true. It's just, going from that to this is just so much better. But I can agree that there was some, there were some things that were lacking. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I love it, uh, I love necros. <laughs> what do you got, Colin? Yeah. Um, just saying something on the character creator, I saw... Personally, I thought it was actually pretty robust. Um, I I have a, I had a few issues with it that just kind of go back to gaming in general. Um, I noticed that in character creators, you cannot seem to make a normal-looking female character because I noticed in almost every single MMO or character creator, it is very hard to make a real-life-looking human female. They look like they're supermodels or like they came out of like, you know, this factory where they make perfectly shaped women and kind of things. It's, I have, it bugs me in general that, you know, the males get like an older dude who's looking all beat up and they get these beards and they can look these really manly men or they can look like, say, you know, these pretty boys. They have this huge spectrum of male. They need to female and it's just supermodel babes. It's supermodel like, super or it's shit. Yeah, it's really it's really one or the other, and I I think the only character creator that got it right so far for me was Skyrim. I think you can make an ugly looking female in that, and that's pretty much fun. But the body types are still that hourglass, and that goes to gaming in general. It's nothing against Guild Wars. Yeah. I think their character creator, their face. If you got into the face a little bit more, you could do some things with it. Like I saw people making celebrities on YouTube and stuff like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, I saw that too. Admi the Leo it. Arnold <laughs> yeah, Schwarzenegger yeah. and Skyrim. Yeah, exactly. That. I mean, you you could do some really <laughs> crazy stuff with the with the Guild Wars two and the Skyrim one. So, I, I think that's going to get better from here to launch. I think that's probably one of the little things they're tweaking and trying to do better. I hope, I, I hope, hope, what? hope that Guild Wars does something where we can make human females look not, or, or and even the Norns, you know, human looking females that are not supermodels. That sure would be nice. Did you guys? I ever don't think they would. Go ahead. I don't think they're going to change the character creation just because it's so late in the game and it, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with their character creation. Why would they go back and change it when they have so many other things to fix? Yeah, It's true. I don't think it's back and change. I think it's probably something that's still um, still in, in, works, in the works or whatever. Yeah, I feel like the character creation is done. I mean, it's something that like I could see that as a final product. It, it works. I'm kind of like, it's I'm kind of stoked all in all about the Savari uh, character creation. I think that's the one yeah. that will um, have that level of customization that's going to be fulfilling because of um, you know all the designs of the leaves and whatnot that they were talking about when they re-released the rehashed version of the Savari. Oh yeah, I'm super excited for Savari. I think it's going to be awesome. I'm not actually a fan of how the guys look, but I really lo like how the the gr the females look in them. Um, and how, like, you know, everything about them. And also, uh, with the Azura, I feel that they'll have a, a larger spectrum as to what you can do. I mean, everything from how big the eyes are, you can change the complete face of an Azura. And, because they also have the, the ears, like, you can, you know, make them big or small, and sideways, and... So, looking forward yeah, to seeing them in future events. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that as well. It's going to be... Like, I, I wanted to play Silvari, but obviously they're not on the beta, so I, I'm really looking forward to that. That's why I felt that experimenting around in the beta was not really a problem for me. I know a lot of people were like, oh, I'm going to save this and this and this for the final game. I'm like, all the stuff that I want to do isn't even available in the beta, yeah. so I'm, I'm just kind of free reign. I can do what I want. So, um... Who did we all play? Like, uh, I played the Mesmer a little bit and whatnot, um, which I actually very much enjoyed the Mesmer. Off the first Guild Wars, I did play uh, Mesmer as my main. And, and 
Guild Wars 2, they did change quite a bit about the Mesmer in of itself, um, especially the, um, you know, adding the illusions and the clones, which, in my opinion, I'm, s I'm such a bittersweet when it comes to it, like the original, uh, I guess you would say, system or style of the Mesmer versus Guild Wars 2. Um, I very much enjoyed the Mesmer, um, playing around with it and everything, and especially in PvP. They're very, very mobile. You know, being able to um, use the portals or blinking and whatnot, trying to get to uh, point A to point B quicker, and it just causes a lot of harass kind of style of gameplay in the structured PvP that I was playing at. And even in PvE, um, it was a lot of fun, but the clones in PvE didn't seem to hinder the AI at all when it came down to um, them attacking me or t attacking the clones. So for PvE, I was more, much more apt to going for a lot more illusions because they caused a lot more damage and um, took a lot more damage all in all. But uh, what did you play, Paul? I played Necro pretty much the entire weekend, except for maybe, I don't know, a couple hours where I tried out a Char Engineer. Um, Necro in PvP is really strong. <laughs> uh, uh, it really strong. Like it, it usually, it took around like three or four people to take me down. In and PvE I could get around. PvE. Like I, I was in PvP. In PvE, I, uh, I don't know. I wasn't as strong, obviously, because lower level. Yeah. Um. But PvP was it was just crazy. Uh, Lich form, Death Shroud. I, I was able to get out of a lot of situations and get around the map a lot. I. <laughs> In, uh, I have a PvP video up uploading right now, uh, it'll probably show you some stuff. There's, uh, one situation, or no, one, one match where I, I got to the clock tower, like, near the start of the match. And took the clock tower, made my way over to, uh, I was just, I was watching, uh, watching the enemies just come from the top of the clock tower after we captured it and like I would turn into Lich 4 and, and drop down on them and summon Jagged Horrors on top of them and like take down one guy then go to the uh, go to the trebuchet and like start taking out people from afar and you'll see when it's uploaded yeah definitely we'll go on it, it was pretty good out. yeah uh, how do you feel with the necro compares to the necro in Guild Wars 1 Say, uh, Jade Quarry is your, your ex area of expertise. Yeah, um, well, since, since the change in my, uh, in my build in Guild Wars 1 for my, uh, Necro for Jade Quarry, I don't know, it's pretty, like, I'm, I'm doing Minion Master in, in Guild Wars 1 now, and it's a little bit different, a little bit. Reminiscent? Yeah. Did the Necromancer have that minion master kind of vibe to it with all the uh, minions that you're able to summon and whatnot? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you, the bone, uh, what was it, bone whores or bone bone minions? That's it. Um, you can only summon two of them, but I uh, eventually near the end of the beta, I started go messing around with more of the uh, more of the summons. Mm -hmm. But with Lich form, you get five jagged horrors that you can so summon on top of someone like it, it's a mark so they have to cross over top of it but uh, you could su you could pretty much place that on top of the enemy and it would summon them instantly and if you had your two bone minions with you you could like set them off and I had death nova as a trait so when I would set them off it would do putrid explosion and death nova damage Extra little bit of damage. Death Nova in Guild Wars 1 was so strong. <laughs> I remember that from uh, my suicidal Jade. Yeah, oh, was was like being Necro. the bomb and running in and just dying and then reviving. Yeah. 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 Anyone, who had, yeah. Who, anyone who's yeah. gone in Jade Quarry knows what a, a Necro Bomber does. A bomber is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did that for like half a year. 